Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Conrad Homestead. My name is Paul. If you haven't been here before, we've had a lot of new subscribers. We're on an eight acre property in South Central Kentucky. If you know anything about the Kentucky weather, you can have all four seasons in one week, sometimes in one day. So just four days ago, it was 20 degrees out here and we were covered with four inches of snow. So now that's all thawed out and cleaned out. So one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because we've had a lot of... You want to be in the video? Do you want to talk or you want to let me talk? Well, come on now. Give me a break here. I can't... Ah, come on. Trying to make a video. Come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. Are you gonna let me talk? Can I talk? Can I talk? Now? Can I talk? Can I talk, now, please? <sighs> Sorry about that interruption. Uh, we've had a lot of really cool stuff going on lately. Some stuff we've been waiting for and looking forward to. And I just wanted to give you guys kind of a midwinter break in the cold update here. And this is where we house our rabbits. And the chickens uh, nest down here at night, right below the rabbits. So this is their main nesting area. So what I did on the other side of this uh, little fenced-in area is I mounded up the compost, which is basically composted wood chips, uh, chicken manure, rabbit manure, uh, spent hay. And I just kind of made a wall out of that. And then this compost that's down in here this compost actually stays pretty warm. The chickens, believe it or not, they spent um, some nights in here that got into the single digits. It was getting down to five and six degrees in here and they were just fine. They all made it through the winter. We didn't lose one of them. You know, we weren't sure exactly how that was gonna go. I'm gonna show you this other side. You know, this thing is not airtight. A lot of times you, ha you hear where people get say that you gotta seal up your chicken barn and you gotta do all this. These guys just had a place to hunker down out of the cold. They, uh, they were all together. I'm going to show you this other side. You know, you can see the light coming in there. It's not sealed up. I'll show you the rabbits. Uh, we actually lost one rabbit. Um, it was actually one that looked almost exactly like this black one right here. Um, she had babies. So she had six of them. And um, on the seventh one... She had complications, so when we came out in the morning, the seventh one was stuck, and she was dead. So we lost one rabbit, so that was unfortunate. But this is her daughter. This white one that's in the back here, this is our new buck. So he's going to take over for Charlie. Here's Charlie right here. All the rest are does. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five more does. This is on the outside of that chicken area. And then you can see down at the bottom is where I mounted up that compost just to make a wall, a little barrier wall. See that down there? And then the chickens will knock it down. And so they're basically turning it. And then I pick it up and I throw it back up there. And I try and keep it in level with this piece of wood right here. That way there's about three feet um, of a wall to keep the wind from blowing through this area. So this is um, Victoria's rabbit right here. And this, this is the cage where the one that we lost was in. Um, we only really use about a third of this barn um, for livestock. This area is an area where the sheep can come into. So actually we just got three more sheep. Um, they're kind of skittish now because they were raised out in a big pasture and they didn't have very much human contact. Actually, before I show you the sheep, I'm gonna show you, kind of give you a little update on our chickens. Here's the chickens. I've been using the chickens to do like a compost mound and they're managing that in this area. So we have about 25 Rhode Island Reds, about 12 Isa Browns, which is a mixture between Rhode Island Red and White Leghorn. And they're supposed to be a really good egg laying chicken. So we kept, four of these meat birds so that we can see how they do. 
Now they have much thicker legs and we're noticing that they're much better scratchers. They're much better at turning over the soil. Their legs are probably twice as thick. But yeah, that's what's going on with the birds. Let me show you the sheep. I'm just gonna flip you around. You can see the RV in the background over there. Down by the workshop, there's the house. So this is actually the highest point in our property and I actually wanna put a, a pond right in this area so that we can feed and irrigate almost everything that's downhill from here without having to use any pumps. So here is Here's the new sheep. So I'm gonna kind of back over there. This is gonna be a, a trick. I'm walking downhill backwards, trying not to trip. So, yeah, see, they're, they're pretty skittish. So they kind of ran over into where these chickens are. So here they are. That, normally they don't go into that chicken pen, but there's a good shot of them. Hey girls, look over here. No, no, don't go in there. They're kind of trapped over here. I'm just gonna reach around the corner. Hey girls. They don't know where to go. They're kind of trapped. There's the new girls. Where's the other one? Oh, there she is. Okay, so now I'm outside the sheep fence and uh, or outside the chicken fence and the sheep are coming out. Now that I've come out of that area. But this is one thing that's very momentous to us right behind me is this. What's so great about that? There's a kid sitting on a pile of wood chips. So we got our first delivery of wood chips. As you can see, it's warmed up quite a bit. The kids are out here running around on their bikes with this uh, break in winter. It's 50 degrees out. So back when we were in Arizona, oh, uh, if you haven't been around the channel very long, we came to Kentucky from Arizona in November of 2019. So we've really only been here for one full year and we're coming into our second year. In Arizona, when it was 50 degrees out, everything stopped. Everyone slowed down. It was too cold to do much outside. And uh, here, it is wonderful. They came and they dumped a load of pine and then uh, about two hours later, they came and they dumped another load and then they dumped a third load about two hours after that. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. We were having to go down to a local mill and pick up wood chips, but these ones here, these are, these are uh, chipped really fine. They're a lot smaller. They should break down a lot faster. So this is awesome for us. The tree trimming company needs a place to dump the wood chips and we can use the wood chips, so this works out perfectly. We've been wanting to uh, get a connection like this for a long time, so this is awesome. So I wanna show you guys a little something that I've been doing on this compost bin. I think one of the first videos that we made was on this compost bin, so I'm figuring if I keep putting new material on the top, you know, gravity will settle it and all those nutrients are leaching down to the bottom. So this bottom stuff should be the most nutrient rich. So um, what I did is I removed the bottom board here and I'm just kind of digging that out. And now I'm, I'm, I'm starting to add more stuff to it. I just added another layer of wood chips on top. So in here we put all kinds of stuff. We put kitchen scraps. I'll show you right here. There's, you can see eggshells. So that um, calcium that's in the eggshells, that'll break down and then that'll get put into the garden. Okay, so now I'm at the other end of the garden. Um, I was just down here by the um, compost bin. Here's the garden, here's what it looks like now. Um, you can see these white silage tarps. I'm actually gonna flip around this way and you can see this hay, this is across the street. Um, this is a big hay field and then they store their hay right up near the road where it's easy to access. So. The reason I point that out is because that's where these uh, silage tarps come from, this type of operation. A lot of times they'll take those big rolls of hay and they'll cover them, they'll wrap them in a silage tarp to protect them so they don't have to put them in a barn, but they're protected out in the field. So a lot of these farmers, they have an excess of this and this is a waste material. There's also some black, the same exact uh, stuff 
right here but in black so now that we have all these wood chips and these guys are um, gonna start bringing us a pretty constant supply of wood chips we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the plastic in the garden um, and we're gonna start using the wood chips as mulch so well, one of the methods that we use to um, get rid of the grass is we put down cardboard like this and then we put wood chips on top of it to hold it in place then the cardboard breaks down and then the wood chips break down and it, it creates really good soil. One thing that we plan on doing this week is taking all those plants that we got from Cody. Uh, the last video that we made was the 200 plus plants uh, video. And what we plan on doing is taking a lot of those plants, especially the bushes and the trees and getting them put in the ground. Um, they have a chance to root and the roots don't dry out and they do a process what's called healing in so there's not a lot growing in the garden right now, but there is still life, you know. It was covered by snow, and a lot of people look at the garden at that in that phase, and they think to themselves, man, that, that uh, garden is completely dead. The strawberries, they're doing just fine. And um, they'll fruit out in the middle of May and June, and they'll come back. We have some uh, ginger and some turmeric right behind them. Those should come up. If you see anything like this a green thing here, that's elephant garlic right in there. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you was this uh, black currant. So you can see the, uh, the new growth on it. It's already starting to come up. So that's pretty awesome. There's one elderberry. Here's an elderberry right here. And you can see that it has some buds starting to come out and green up. And so it's pretty cool because this stuff is coming to life. Here's another little one right here. So there's six plants in here. I believe uh, three of them are black currants and three are elderberries. So this is awesome. One other thing I wanted to show you guys was the leaves that we got in here. So when we go out and we collect these from the roadsides, a lot of these houses in these bigger cities, they just put their leaves in bags out by the road and um, they have a service that comes through and they pick up these leaves. So what we do is we go out and we find these and then we put them, um, you know, we collect them. So um, I'm going to show you guys a little method that we use um, very similar to what I was telling you about with the cardboard and the wood chips just a minute ago. But we do that with the leaf bags. So we take the leaves and you can see the bag kind of exposed right here because they're overlapping the, the plastic. So what we do is we take the, the, the leaves out of the bags and then we put the leaves on top of the bags. So the bags create like a solid um, perimeter so the grass can't come up. There's one last thing I want to show you in the garden and that is the beets. So these beets right here, um, they weren't showing any signs of life and um, they were looking kind of bleak. But I left about 10 of these beets in the ground because I wanted to see if I can get seed from them. Now this is the Chioga variety that I got from Baker Creek Seed Company. And these beets, uh, they're really good beets. If you look at these, a lot of these uh, look like they're dead, like there's nothing going on. I'm actually gonna pull one of them out here. They're huge. Check this out. Uh, this big old beet. Um, I'll just add a little note here too. Uh, there was a couple people that asked what kind of fertilizer we're using uh, when they saw some of our produce and when they saw um, in particular our sweet potatoes. So we do all organic gardening. We only bring in um, inputs that are basically biomass plant, plant material and that becomes our fertilizer. Um, just like the different techniques that I've mentioned before in the video or just earlier in the video with the leaves and the wood chips and the cardboard and all that stuff, that's all we're using. Uh, we also are making a, um, a compost with uh, manures, chicken manure and rabbit manure. So that gets added here as well. So this beet, as you can see, it's huge. Um, this beet is still alive. You know, I've, I've yanked it out and probably made it difficult. Hopefully I didn't kill it. But I wanted you guys to see this. Just wanted to show you some of these um, uh, onions that we're growing. Uh, we put these in a couple months ago. A lot of these onions are onions that um, started to green up and sprout out before we could eat them. 
So we just put them in the ground, hope they'll make some onions uh, this spring and we'll get to harvest them. So this little area right here, this is all green onions and these green onions were about six packs of green onions that you get at the store. And these were in the, um, in the produce dumpster. So when we were out picking up the, um, the chicken feed, we got a bunch of these bundles. I think there were six of them. And we just planted them because we didn't want to eat them because we got them in the dumpster. And uh, it was just kind of an experiment to see if they would grow. And these have been in the ground now for about three months and they just keep growing right through the winter. They're doing great. You can see the, the wood chip malt. I don't know if I've showed this, but I'll show you guys what kind of soil you start producing in this mulch after a while. So you can see there's a layer of, of leaves on top. So you can already see that you got the black broken down leaves. And then you have this really like matted material and these are where the wood chips have started to break down. And then if you keep going lower, you have more wood chips. And then this is the actual soil. So we've noticed that this has gotten a lot more humus, a lot less sticky. Most of the uh, soil around in our area is clay, probably about 100% of it. So even the clay in that top, about one to two inches, has gotten a lot darker. There's a lot more organic matter in it. Um, and so that's what those wood chips turn into after a while. And uh, another thing that we do or don't do is pull up the dead plants. So when the plants die in the fall, we just cover them. That's what nature does. Nature just keeps covering stuff up. It doesn't dig things up. It doesn't till. You know, sometimes you do have like stuff like pigs and stuff like that that will till. But nature just keeps adding and adding and adding. And that's where your soil fertility comes in. So we just keep adding organic matter to the soil. So just kind of to give you a panorama from the southwestern corner of our property. So there's the tobacco barn. Then you can see the garden downhill from that. And then if we go down to the backyard, if you hear me talk about the fence row, that is this line of, of trees that goes back through here. And that basically goes from the southwest corner of the property all the way up to the northeast corner. So along this fence row, a lot of these plants are unwanted plants. I'm going to flip you around here and show you what this looked like. Um, a lot of along the fence row was stuff like this. It was honeysuckle and you can see honeysuckle is still green. So we don't actually hate honeysuckle. We don't, we're not trying to eradicate it. We're just trying to manage it so it doesn't take over. So this honeysuckle that's here, um, the sheep uh, can use that very it's very good i mean it's it's the middle of winter now you know that we just went through a, a really cold snowstorm and all that and we still have green leaves so anything that's like that that's beneficial that the sheep can eat we're going to keep around so this is some of our best uh, pasture right in this area this is where the, we run the sheep through and the sheep are currently uh, down right over here you can see the uh, sheep shade right here there's the pond that is the upper pond I am here inside with the sheep and I have the little lamb over my left shoulder here. And this is the first lamb that we have had born here. So we weren't expecting lambs yet. We put the ram in with the sheep in December. So we shouldn't actually be getting any lambs. Let's see, where's she going? I keep an eye on her. We, we weren't expecting any lambs until May or June, but um, this one came early. So the only thing that we can deduct is that this particular sheep was bred before we got her. So we got this particular sheep in September. So she had to have been bred. Their gestation period or the amount of time that they're pregnant for is six months. The rest of these seem to be bred. They seem to be pregnant. We're expecting at least eight more uh, lambs in May and June. So we'll see how that goes. But we're super excited to see our first lamb. There it is right there. Pretty cool. And the sheep are doing good. Just a little update on the hay. The hay's been working out great. It's been fattening them up. A lot of these areas um, 
the pastures weren't managed correctly because we didn't get the sheep early enough in the season. But this year we should have plenty of stock density to keep the grass down. And the plan is to see if our property can support 20 sheep or uh, pretty close to 20 sheep. So we'll see how many lambs we get. Right now our total sheep count is 15 and that is including the newest little lamb. So we have three paddocks down in this bottom area, down by the ponds here. I'm in standing in the first one that they were in. So they were kind of here longer than they normally would have been. I wanted you to be able to see the amount of uh, disturbance that they did here. They laid down a lot of grass. You can see a lot of this grass is, you know, making contact with the ground so that it creates a good mat for next year's grass and other uh, broad leaves to come up into. So this is kind of the goal, is to use the sheep to prep the ground and to keep the, the uh, pasture maintained. And part of that is uh, being able to uh, correctly manage them, to keep them moving through the property, not just to leave them in one place. So this would be the after. They, they were in this area for about 12 days. So then let me um, come over this way. So here's another angle of the after right here. I'm just down on the bottom corner of it. See that grass is real laid down. Now they've been over here and that's where they're at now. They've been there for two days. So as soon as the snow melted away, we moved them. So that's the during. And then I'll come down this way. And here's the lower pond, by the way. And then I'll come over here and I will show you the before. So now we're in the opposite corner. So there's where they're at. And then this is where they're going to. And you can see how tall that grass still is. But this year, we won't allow the grass to get that that tall and we'll keep it managed so we want to keep it between about 4 and 12 inches so that's the goal there's the sheep all right guys so I had a great time making this video it was uh, really neat to be able to get out here and show you guys some different areas on the property um, now that we had a break in the winter so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you hit the thumbs up make sure you hit that like button that really helps us out um, that really encourages us to keep making these videos if you're not a subscriber to the channel, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button and then select all and you'll get notifications every time we put out a new video. You'll be able to see and keep uh, up to date with our progress. We do appreciate you watching and we'll see you on the next one.